God promises to be present. Our adult topic is promises of restoration and gladness. Promises of restoration and gladness. Uh, from Joel 2, 21 through 27. Our devotional reading is coming from Exodus 33, 12 through 23. Exodus 33, 12 through 23. I'll give you a second. All right, and Moses said unto the Lord, See thou saidst unto me, Bring up this people, and thou hast not let me know whom thou would send with me. <clears throat> Excuse me. Yet thou hast said, I know thee by name, and thou hast also found grace in my sight. Now therefore I pray thee, if I have found grace in thy sight, show me now thy way. <coughs> Excuse me that I may know thee, that I may find grace in thy sight, and consider that this nation is thy people. And he said, My presence shall go with thee, and I will give thee rest. And he said unto him, If thy presence go not with me, carry us not up hence. And then shall it be known here that I and thy people have found grace in thy sight. Is it not in that thou goest with us, so shall we be separated, I and thy people, from all the people that are upon the face of the earth. <coughs> Y'all, excuse me. I don't know what's going on here. And the Lord said unto Moses, I will do this thing also that thou hast spoken. For thou hast found grace in my sight, and I know thee by name. And he said, I beseech thee, show me thy glory. And he said, I will make all my goodness pass before thee. And I will proclaim the name of the Lord before thee. And will be gracious to whom I will be gracious. And will show mercy on whom I will show mercy. And he said, Thou canst not see my face, for there shall no man see me and live. And the Lord said, Behold, there is a place by me, and thou shalt stand upon a rock. And it shall come. God, I'm sorry. In this thing, you're having a little problem. You're going to flip pages on me. And it shall come to pass while my glory passes by, that I will put thee in the cliff of the rock and will cover thee with my hand while I pass by. And I will take away my hand and thou shalt see my back part, but my face shall not be seen. Amen. That's our devotional reading. All right, give me the aims out of the standard and out of the uh, quarterly. Quarterly first. All right, we want to look at that last one you read there at the end. Hopefully, we have time. Promises of restoration and gladness. The, that's the other topic. First thing I want to talk about is restoration. What does restoration mean? Okay, what does restore mean? <laughs> Yeah, all right, bring it back. In other words, they must have gotten away from what God, the way God has. And that's why he's talking about he's going to have to restore them. Amen. And then, so we want to look at this promise. Promise now, we know that God keeps every promise that he makes. Amen. There is no doubt about it. If God said it, it's going to happen. So this, this, this subject is telling us that God is going to restore them. He said, promises of restoration and gladness. The gladness is going to be on their part when they get restored back to the position that they had. 
Now, some of the background on our lesson. If you uh, did any research or study, you find out that they cannot nail down when Joel was written. They don't know when it was written or what uh, uh, exactly what it was, but it was written to the southern kingdom of Judah. It was written after locusts. They had a plague of locusts that ate everything that they had. Amen. The locusts had cleaned them out. Now, if you go back up and look at, uh, you know, the, the background reading was uh, the second chapter of Joel. You read about darkness and gloom and thick darkness covering. And, and what that was, the locusts were so, so uh, uh, plenteous that they blotted out the sun. It, it was like an eclipse, a dark cloud, and they just came through and ate up everything that they had. All right, now is why they need restoration. So our lesson starts at verse 21. And I want you to look, and when we read through it, we're going we gonna to pick out some things. But uh, I don't have the outline. What's the first outline? It goes for it. All right, 21 through 23. And, and what's the title of it? Rejoice. Rejoice. Look at how it started out. Fear not. That's the thing need to be said after the locusts done come through. So he's telling them now to fear not. And he starts out, he said, fear not, O land. Now remember that now. Be glad and rejoice, for the Lord will do great things. Now, you know, the locusts attack the land. Then he goes down to verse 22, be not afraid. So fear not, be not afraid. Ye beasts of the field. So he started out talking about the land. Now he's talking about the beasts of the field. For the pastures of the wilderness do spring. For the tree bears her fruit. The fig tree and the vine do yield their strength. Remember, the locusts have done cut them all down. And so he tell them now, this is part of that restoration. He tell them to rejoice. And the rejoice part comes from verse 23, where he say, be glad then, ye children of Zion. Now, I want you to notice how he did. He started out talking about the land, healing the land. Then he talked about the beast, going to provide for them. The last thing he talked about was the people. He told the land is not to be afraid. The beast don't be afraid, but he told the folks to be glad. He told them to be glad. Ye children of Zion, and rejoice in the Lord your God, for he had given you the former rain moderately, and he would cause to come down for you the rain, the former rain, the latter rain, in the first month. And what's so important about the rain? Because they need the rain to grow the crops in order that they can get things back. Because remember, the locusts ate up everything. The land was desolate. And desolate means like a desert. You know, they ate the stuff down to the root. I mean, they ate up everything. And, you know, that means the animals were starving to death. That means the people were starving. Amen. Uh, that means that the water was contaminated. Everything was messed up. Uh, you remember... A few years ago, we had them crickets. Y'all remember how them crickets were? I mean, every every day at school, they we had to just sweep them, just sweep them, cause they were just, I mean, millions of them. They looked like just cricket. So now a locust is a lot bigger than a cricket, and locusts devour any green plant, any plant. Just yeah, yeah, I know them cricket did stink now. Because they died and just be stinking now. So you think about them locusts as they fly through. Like I say, they, they were so thick that they blotted out the sun. And if you read back in the first part of Joel chapter 2, he talked about the darkness and all of that. And that was because of that swarm of locusts that was going through eating. You think about a man that planted his vineyard, his crops, and all that stuff. And just about time he gets to a harvest, here they come, and nothing you can do. You know, they didn't have no arcing. 
I know Miller Pest Control back then. You know, <laughs> it wouldn't have done them any good anyway because the reason for the plague was, again, because of their disobedience. And, and that's the reason for why God allowed uh, the plague to come on them. And, and remember, when God does something like that, even in our life, he does that so that we would know he is God, that he is in control. We're not in control. He is in control. That man thinking he's going to get a good crop, and he go to bed that night, and he wake up the next morning, and ain't nothing but dirt out there in the field. Nothing but dirt. And so, again, God does that so we can understand that, that, that what we have is because he allows us to have it. And if he don't want to, if we don't want to act right about it, God can take it away just as quick as he gave it to us. And, and we have to remember that in our day and time. Because we want to, we, 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 we don't, you know, we might not have uh, a swarm of locusts, but we, we have stuff that get devoured. Amen. And then we wondering why it getting devoured. You know, have you ever counted on something and it didn't come through? Uh -huh. and, and, and then you wonder why, why it didn't come through. Sometimes God just have to show us that he God. Amen. Now, now he's not going to leave us or forsake us, but he's going to make us feel like he's going to love us and forsake us. Yeah, we're going to feel like that. Amen. And so, huh? Yes, sir. He gets your attention. And, 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 and the thing about it, the problem that we have with that is he'll get our attention. We'll know he got our attention. But just as soon as the crop come back up, yes, sir, we forget about him and, and that what he's done for us. And, and that's why the lesson we have to be taught like over and over again. Amen. Mario said he's tired of teaching folk over and over again. He, he want them to learn something. <laughs> but we see they have, have trouble learning something. I remember Mr. Mudge over there. He, I thank God sometimes he feel like that. Mr. Mudge used to say that the more I teach y'all, the dumb I get. <laughs> so anyway, he started out with the land. Then he went to the beast, and then he went to the children of Zion. He told them to be glad, to be glad, because what had happened to y'all, I'm finna reverse it now. And that's why he talked about the rain, the rain coming so that now y'all can grow some more crops and all that kind of thing. The locals had cleared out. You know, they had cleared out now. And so now we finna get ready to restart this thing to restore you and all of us on many occasions in our lives have been restored yeah. amen, amen. amen. We, we've been restored and we ought to be be thankful for that and glad for that but the main thing is we ought to recognize who did the restoration right. yeah we didn't do it god did the restoration and that's what we have to remember. Now, the first outline is rejoice. So these people now have a reason to rejoice. Where they looked out there in the field of bear, the sprig done start growing up. Rain done come down. He already told them that the tree is going to bear fruit. The fig tree and the vine going to yield their strength. They're going to have, they're going to start growing things. And the vine, he's talking about the grape vine and tree, fig tree and olive tree and all them. They're going to start by producing fruit, even though it had been eat off to the nub by them locusts. And, and the only way they can do that is God did. It's going to be a miraculous thing. And, and we have to recognize, we don't, that, let me say it like this. We don't recognize miracles. Amen. We don't recognize the fact that when we wake up in the morning, that's a miracle. We, we don't we don't count that. That's that's something we figured it just supposed to happen. Yeah, yeah. We don't recognize. You know, we look for miracles to be big, uh, amazing kind of thing. 
but you know, you taking a breath is a miracle. You being able to see something is a miracle. Walk, talk, eat, all that's a miracle because it did not have to happen like that. And you think about how many folks is it that can't even put a spoonful of food in their mouth. You know, you think about it. So for us to be able to do a lot of things, you know, we always want God to give us a miracle. He give us hundreds of miracles every day. And so these folks need to recognize that 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 this rain, the tree bad fruit, and all of that is simply because God had mercy on them. Amen. Because if you read in, in Joel, you don't read about repentance in there, about the folks doing a lot of repenting and stuff. Yeah. I don't think they ever repented, but God still had mercy. They still had mercy. That's why I say you don't read about them uh, 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 you know, getting in sackcloth and ashes or, or doing any repentance like that. But God still, because God had, the, the thing about it, you go back to our, our, our devotional reading, God had made a promise to those folks. And because of that promise, God did what he was supposed to do, even though they didn't do what they were supposed to do. Now, let me, again, I want to bring the lesson to us. You think about how many times in our life God had done what he was going to do, even when we didn't do what we were supposed to do. Yeah, you know, if, if God treated us like we treated him, would none of us be here today? Wouldn't be here today. All right, that's the fresh outline. Any questions, comments? Y'all hit me out. Yeah, now, 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 the, the, when you talk, whenever you talk about former, you talk about something that had happened in the past and how to get it. And then you talk about the latter rain in the first month. In other words, it, 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 you could put read it just like this. He was going to send the rain at the exact time that they needed it to grow the crop. That's the significance of it. He's going to send it at the right time because, you know, it can rain at the wrong time. And your crops will be burned. You know, they, we had a lot of problem with that. Uh, I don't know, a few years ago, you know, it, uh, when they got their, soon they got their seeds in the ground, it drowned them out. Yeah, and so the rain needs to come at the exact right time. And that's what he's talking about, forming a lot of rain. They're going to come at the exact right time. And, that, that's, and again, God knows that, knows what time. Amen. He held it back until it was the right time for it so that, again, everything could produce the maximum amount. And, again, that's what God, uh, like I say, in, in our lives, God, and I ain't talking about rain, but other things, come at the right time. You know, a lot of times we praying for this and that, and it don't happen. But then when it happens, it happens right when it needs to happen. Right when it needs to happen. Because God know, and we don't know. Anything else on that first eye line? All right, give me the name of the second one. And that's the rest of the chapter. Yeah, that's the rest of the, rest of the, the, the text. And the floors shall be full of wheat, and the fat shall overflow with wine and oil. And I will restore you to the year that the locust hath eaten, the canker worm and the caterpillar and the palmer worm, my great army which I sent among you. Now you see that? I want to stop right there. Let you know that we blame the devil for a lot of stuff. But God let them know I'm the one sent them. And the reason I sent them, because you didn't act right. And sometime in our life, God the one sent that stuff. In order to get us to 
act right. I get our attention right. Amen. And he says, that was his great army which he sent among you. And ye shall eat in plenty and be satisfied. And praise the name of the Lord your God that had dealt wondrously with you. And my people shall never be ashamed. And ye shall know that I am in the midst of Israel. And that I am the Lord your God and none else. And my people shall never be ashamed. Amen. Now, 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 go back to this. Starting at verse 24. Again, you know, verse 23, 23. 23 <laughs> talked about the former and latter rains and all that stuff. And I told you that many going to say on time. Now look what the result of it is. The floor shall be full of wheat. And the fat shall overflow with wine and oil. Mm -hmm. And that oil with olive oil. So that means olives had to grow. Wine from the grapes. Grapes had to grow. And he said he's going to restore to you, that's that restoration, mm -hmm. the years that the locusts had eaten. Because, see, the locusts ate everything, stuff they had stored up in their barns, and their locusts ate everything. And so what do you tell them? I'm going to fill it back up. Amen. I'm going to restore all that back to you. Thank you. Yeah, well, yeah, that's where they're, they're like the threshing floor where they Thresh out the wheat and stuff. Yeah. He said it's going to be full of wheat. Because now it wasn't nothing in there but locust droppings. <laughs> so he's going he to put my wheat back in there. And he said he's going to restore to you the years, the years now that the locust had eaten. And that was all they stored up stuff. Mm -hmm. See, they didn't have anything. Now, remember, because if you go back up in Georgia, they say that the land was desolate. Mm -hmm. That means they couldn't find nothing to eat or anything to eat because they're eating everything. Right. You might have had a little crumb under your bed you thought you were going to have. Uh -uh. <laughs> Logan got that, too. <laughs> so... Again, it was God's army that he sent to do that in order that his people would know who he is. All that stuff. He called that his great army. Caterpillar, canker worm, all that stuff. You probably died. The other than worm. Yeah. So they got locusts flying, worms crawling, eating up everything. And, and you think about it, that 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 means that uh these folks had nothing. Now the southern kingdom and the northern kingdom didn't get along. So the, the northern kingdom wasn't gonna give them anything to eat. Mm -mm. Because this now this is toward, toward the southern kingdom, Judah. That's what this was to, Judah, the southern kingdom. So they wasn't going to get anything to eat. So that they were. And, and what it did for them, now they were totally dependent on God. Totally dependent on God. Now, it's a shame that God had to do this in order to get them dependent. And like I said, when you read the book of Joel, the number three chapter, you don't find where they were repentant. Mm -mm. You don't find where they were repentant. Yeah. Because they wouldn't. They wouldn't. Mm-mm. And, and now, now again, to bring the lesson to us, the question I ask, and it's not one for you to answer, but you to think about, are we repentant? Are we repentant? Now, all of us in here, uh, in here, uh, 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 know that we do not live perfect lives. 
All of us deal daily with sin. Amen. We deal daily with sin. And so are we repentant? Now remember, repentant is more than just saying, uh, I stole some money. That's not repenting. I stole some money. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, I stole some money. Okay, what that mean? Well, I'm probably going to steal some more next week. That's what that mean. <laughs> That, that's confession. But repentance means I stole some money, but I'm not going to steal anymore. Yeah. And, and that's what, and that's what the, these folks wasn't repenting. They, they would go to church. I go to the temple. They burn their animals. And they say they whatever, Hail Marys or whatever. But then when they leave, they did, They went right back to where you know what they were doing. Yeah. Well, and that's the thing we look at today. When folk come into church, do they come uh, to really worship God, to really get closer to God, or do they come so folk won't ask them where they were Sunday? <laughs> do they do they come uh, so folk won't you know to come just to see who else is coming? And listen, we have to we have to be honest. There are folks who, who well, a lot of folks come to church and go to church, not just here but other churches, and and it ain't called God on their mind. It ain't called God on their mind. They got other stuff on their mind. And and that's why I would say this this, this lesson here. He said he gonna restore to you the years that the locusts had eaten. Think about it in your life. If God restored some of the stuff that the locals have, your, have eaten of yours. Now, I ain't talking about them flying locals, but I, you know, all of us have suffered loss. Have suffered loss. So think about it, if God restored that. And, and guess what? He will. He want to. And a lot of times he does. Amen. So we have to we have to deal with that. All right, go on down to verse 26. He said, You shall eat in plenty and be satisfied. Now that's that 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 little three word phrase right there is a, another phrase that is lacking in our life. He said, You shall eat in plenty. But the key is, you'll be satisfied. And see, a lot of us, we got plenty, but we're not satisfied. Amen. We're not satisfied. All right, y'all can hit me there. I'll, I'll stop and let you talk right there. <laughs> yeah, we're not satisfied. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you know, you 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 look at us and and I I, I want to say this about probably every one of us. If I miss one or two, I'm sorry. Most of us got more now than we have ever had in our life. Amen. Yeah. Ain't satisfied with it. Huh? Yeah. <laughs> hey, 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 let me see. <laughs> Is that T.O. now? 
Tio, Tio, not knowing what you say. <laughs> I'm on, I'm on snitch now. No. <laughs> but again, let me go. The, the key is, though, for real, most of us got more than we ever had before, and yet we are not satisfied. We, we thank God not doing us right because we don't have this, that, or the other. And, 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 and again, the, the key, like I said, that them three little words in verse 26, he said, you're eating plenty and be satisfied. And be satisfied. And if we could ever learn, I, I'm going to use another word instead of satisfied, if we could ever learn to appreciate what we got, amen, appreciate it, then it wouldn't be no problem getting some mail. But if you don't appreciate what you got, amen, then, you know, God look at it, they don't need to give them nothing. They don't appreciate that. Yes, ma'am. No, uh-uh. You know, <laughs> yes, sir. Yeah, yeah. No, no, we not, we not that. And and this is, like I say, it, it, it's a, it's a, it's a um, all the way down problem, from the oldest to the youngest. It's all the way down problem. We 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 compare too much. We compare too much. And, and see, God knows what, colon, I'm using me. God knows what I can handle. And sometimes I ask for stuff that I can't handle. And, and because God loved me, he said, no, mm -mm. you ain't ready for that. He said, you might be ready later on, but right now, you ain't ready for that. And, and so I don't get that. And then... Instead of me saying, well, Lord, thank you for keeping that from me. I'm saying, why can't I have that? <laughs> yeah, that's what I say. Why can't I have that? You know, I think about it. It's a commercial that come on TV. I think it's for Liberty Mutual Insurance. And, and one of the children get a box with Liberty Mutual on it. He's so happy. And he asked the other kid what he get. He said, a bike and kick it and go on back and go back into the room. Because he didn't get the Liberty Mutual Insurance. He kicked his bike and walk off like he mad because he got a bicycle. <laughs> and, and that's the way we do God sometimes. Because we looking at other folks. And, and, you know, again, we don't know what they had to go through to be ready. To get that. And I hadn't went through that to be ready for that. And so again, that be satisfied. I'll be appreciative for what we got. And then the second part, I'm still in verse 26. And pray the name of the Lord your God. We're going to pray them. Why? Because I'm, I got plenty. I'm happy with it. So I have a reason to praise God. Now, again, let me say this about us. Every one of us. We come in here Sunday morning. We at the house on through the week. We have a reason 
to praise God. Amen. Amen. You might be sick, still got a reason. Might be broke, still got a reason. Might not have no friend, still got a reason. I, 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 that, that's, everybody at least have one or two good reasons to praise God. If you're alive, you got a reason. And so these folk, they ate in plenty. They were satisfied with what they had. And because of that, they praised God. And look at the, the, the end of that. Because he dealt wondrously with you. Now, there's not a person in this building on the air that can't say God didn't deal wondrously with them. You know, it, it, uh, it, it's that, that where he said that he didn't deal with us according to our sins. Amen. And we ought to all be glad that he didn't deal with us according to our sins. But he dealt wondrously with us. We've we been blessed, y'all. Amen. Amen. Now, I know we got problems, but we still blessed. And he dealt wondrously with us. And I'm so glad for that because, again, you know, the, the, the old church, you just say, I could have been dead, sleeping in my grave. You know, that's what they say. But uh, we think about how he dealt with us. He gave all of us the mind, the strength to be in his house Wednesday night. Amen. Now, he gave some other folks the same mind and strength, but they ain't here. They ain't here. But we here, so he did wonder to with us. Yeah. Uh-huh. That's right. Yeah, yeah. Something wrong. Yeah. I know when we go, you know, Little Rock got a homeless problem. And we go up there, and you see those folks, man, and, you know, it break out. And, 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 you know, I look at now, we supposed to be, I'm going to get off, so I'm getting tangent time, tangent time. You know, we supposed to be the richest country in the world. All that. And we arguing about some papers that folk done took to the house. They spent all that time talking about who done took home some papers. And, and who care? <laughs> and, and, you know, we, we spent sending all that money over there. I know those folk need help and, and all that to Ukraine. I, I know they need help. You know, they having trouble. But, but. What about our folks here? Amen. And then when you think about they talk about all the veterans who, who went and fought for the country. And then they get back and they ain't got a place to live. And then again, I, I look, and, and I tell you, I'm going to get off my tangent and get back to the lesson. You know, I look, when you drive around, you can just drive around Magnolia. There's hundreds of vacant houses. Huh? Yeah, I'm, 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 there's hundreds of them. You know, and then we got folks sleeping on the boxes. You know, we had a Sunday school lesson here about two weeks ago where it talked about what we need to be doing. 
Amen. So we're bringing it home now. All right. And then finally in verse 26, and my people shall never, I'm back off my tent. And my people shall never be ashamed. They never be ashamed. Why? Because God is, if you go back to it, he's going to say it here about in the midst of them. Because if God is with us, that's right. And why should we be ashamed of anything? We have God on our side. And again, I go back to the devotional reading where it talked about, where he was talking with Moses about how he was going to be with them. And that's what he told us. In Matthew, what did he say? And lo, I'm with you. To the end. So God with us. Amen. So we ought to be praising him because he dealt wondrously with us. We ought to be satisfied <coughs> because he's going to provide. Amen. Verse 27. And you shall know that I am in the midst of Israel and that I am the Lord your God and none else. And again, he emphasized the fact that his people shall never be ashamed. He said that you shall know I'm in the midst of Israel. How, how will they know he in the midst? Let's go back up what he said. The tree is going to produce. Floors full of wheat. Going to have plenty of oil, plenty of wine. Rain is going to come at the right time. And you will know that only a God can do that. Because remember, you're starting with zero. You're starting with nothing. So the first thing he said he was going to do was heal the land. And then he was going to uh, take care of the beast. And after you get the land fixed, the beast fixed, now the people will be fixed. And, and you know, he, God knows how to do it. He didn't fix the people first, and they wouldn't have no land to grow nothing, no animals to eat. He got them something to eat and something to grow. And then he fixed the folk. Yeah. Amen. That's like he did if you go back to Genesis. What was the last thing that he made was a man. He got everything ready for him first, and then he made it. Yeah. Amen. So, again, this is our lesson. God promises to be present. And we know that the church, the, the new Israel of God, the church, God has made us that same promise that he's going to be with us. And we should never have to worry about if God with us. God has fixed it now so that once I'm saved, he take a residence in me. And, 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 and no such thing as an eviction notice. He, can't, he don't get out. He in now, and he going to be there. Amen. All right, what we got for the second hour line? <laughs> Uh, yeah, I was about to say, any questions, any comments? Right, now that, 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 that's the, the blessed thing that even though I do some stupid stuff mm -hmm. and some ignorant stuff and some sinful stuff, God does not turn his back on me. Amen. 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 Now, he might dust me up a little bit because he's chasing those whom he loves. He might dust me up a little bit, but he's not going to leave me out there by myself because he know that there's a, a, a line, like a rowing line on my trail just waiting to grab hold of me. Amen. And so, he, he, like I said, God will dust me up like he sent his great army to the evil. But he's not going to allow that enemy to overwhelm me. Amen. Amen. All, right. All right. Any questions? Any questions? Y'all good tonight? All right. Well, any questions tonight about the Sunday school lesson? Any other questions that some of you read, heard, saw? Smell forever. <laughs> no other question. Well, again, I thank everybody for that. 
Now, I have a sheet right here. Last week, we talked about, what did we talk about last week? Uh-huh, and what else we say we're going to start? We're going to, yeah, that, that, because we, you know, we got follow up on the fact that, you know, we feed folks, but then we don't follow up about that spiritual food. That's a, a <coughs> shortcoming. We good about physically feeding folk, but we run up short is that we don't go back and, and give them that bread that lasts and that water that they don't need another drink of. We don't do that. Uh, we fell short on that. So we said we were going to uh, do better. And so I, got a, I have a, a witnessing sign-up sheet right here. I'm going to leave it out for two or three days, well, for a week or so, that if you want to be part of the witnessing teams, you need your name and phone number because we're not going to send you out there without first, yeah, yeah. Teaching you something, because we, you can do more damage if you go out there and don't know what you're doing. Amen. Because uh, I, 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 I don't mean to put you out, but Brother Chris will let you know, you go out there half, with half knowledge, them folks will eat you up. They will eat you up. Huh? Yeah. Uh-huh. <laughs> yeah. And and you know, uh we are one of our problems we have with witnesses is, is the fact that you know uh we, we are prejudges. We'll look at a person and say, well, they ain't gonna, they ain't gonna do nothing, you know. And, and like like Brother Chris say, they, even though they might have a can in their hand, the Bible tells us we got to tell them. Amen. Now you go. Uh, and you got to you got to be willing. I'm gonna I'm gonna, I'm gonna say it. you got to be willing to accept a cussing without cussing back. You got to be willing. You got to be willing for them to, because the first thing folk going, you know, they they going, they they lump all church folks together. And when you go to talking to them about the Lord and 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 think about it, we we not we not trying to get them to join the church. We trying to get them to accept Jesus. And then we can talk to them about the church. You know, most folks' idea of witness it is. You need to go to church. That ain't witnessing right there. Uh uh, that ain't witnessing. So anyway, we gon we gon uh, put this down. I got twenty paces. I hope I have to get another sheet. Amen. And uh, then we will do it. The, the training that we talking about is about two, three hours. That's all. The, that's enough to get you where you can can go out. We we don't want. Uh, we definitely we're not, not going to send you out by yourself. We hope to pair you up because, you know, Jesus said his disciples are two by two. Yeah, two by two. So we want to send ours out two by two. Maybe some team might have three. Because uh, uh, just want you know, again, safety is the issue also. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. And we don't want to put ourselves, we don't want to put, I don't want to put any team in a, in a, in a dangerous situation. So we're going we gonna to talk about all that when we have the training, uh, what to look for and how to, you know, the signs you need to look for and all that because people are crazy today. You know that. We, we see that from the fact of the, all these mass shootings coming up here lately and uh, just everything, you know. Uh, what was it? Grandfather stabbed his grandson and killed him. And, all this kind of stuff, you know, it, it's out there, y'all. And it ain't nothing that we ought to be surprised about. Yeah, it ain't going to be nothing to be surprised about. So we, 
Huh? Like a six-year-old kid. Yeah, a can of gun in school. See. Uh. All right. Anything else tonight? Again, we're glad to have our guests here, man. We appreciate you. Amen. Amen. You you setting an example for some of my members. I appreciate I appreciate you. <laughs> I see you got a friend tonight. Glad to have you with us too. Amen. Glad to have y'all with us tonight. Amen. All right. Anything else? All right. Well, I say thank God for you tonight. Uh, y'all know me. Anytime you have a question, something, just give me a call. Be glad to discuss it with you. Uh, and we look forward to seeing everybody here on Sunday morning. Amen. If nothing else, let me check on the membership. Anybody know about anything in the membership? Uh, two brothers. Oh, man. Okay. And y'all going to do that when? Okay. Okay. All right, all right. Down in Texas? Texas? Okay, okay. All right, well, thank you for letting us know that. We'll remember the whole family in our prayer. Amen. Amen. Uh, yeah. Anything else? All right. There's always something to pray for. Amen. Amen. <laughs> and again, I want to remind you, I'm going to remind you again tonight, and then I'll remind you again Sunday. That starting the first Sunday, uh, we'll be having our children's church. Amen. Uh, Reverend, I think Reverend Moore is going to kick us off the first Sunday in February. And, and so we're looking forward to that, getting that back uh, instituted. We had it at one time. Oh, sorry. But we're getting that back instituted, so we're looking forward to that. Looking forward to getting this witnessing program kicked off. Amen. So we just look at God got some great things ahead of us. Amen. He's dealt wondrously with Mount Zion. Amen. Amen. So we ought to be thankful. Thank you. All right. Nothing else. We have a word of prayer. Let you all go. Father, we thank you now for tonight. We thank you, Father, for your word. And we hope that it will become a part of our lives, that we'll be better. We pray now. We ask you to bless Reverend God and his family as they prepare to uh, celebrate the home going of his brother. We ask you to just touch right now, Father. And Father, we just pray now that all things will be done for your glory. Amen. We thank you for these who are here tonight. We thank you for those who are online with us tonight. And we just give you all the praise. In the mighty name of Jesus, amen and thank God. Amen. amen. Appreciate y'all tonight.